You said that you don't believe Israel is being held to account. Yeah. The Biden administration uh, withheld, halted weapons <gasps> to the middle. Oh, my God. What do you mean? Oh, my that? God. Oh, my you- God. Oh, my God. This is, whoa, after $26 billion? You just got a small taste from a lengthy interview between Don Lemon and Bassem Yusuf. And as you're going to see, that kind of nonsensical line of questioning was common throughout the entire thing. Although we're just going to focus on one portion of this interview. But as insufferable as it was, Bassem Yusuf, of course, handled it perfectly. But what really irritated me the most about Don Lemon was that he asked purposefully dumb questions and engaged in both sidesism in order to play devil's advocate in the name of journalism when he knows better. He should know answers to the questions that he's asking, but I guess he's playing stupid to make the interview more interesting. I don't really know, but here's one example of that. You really believe that, that the U.S. is supporting apartheid? Are you, are you saying what Israel is doing is akin to, to an, apartheid, an apartheid regime? regime? Uh, have you ever, have you, have you done any research about Israel at all? I mean, the look on Bossom's face pretty much says it all. Now, believe it or not, it actually gets worse as the interview goes on. Don Lemon's questions were hacky, and he drew false equivalences that were so absurd, it nearly made my head explode multiple times. Now, going back to that first clip that we saw, Bossom Yusuf's reaction to this notion that Biden has held Israel accountable was to just laugh. Because how else do you respond to that? There's really no other way to respond because that notion is so absurd, it's just laughable. And I know Don Lemon knows that Biden's pause on certain munitions was nothing more than a smokescreen. Because days later, Biden pushed for billions of dollars in weapons for Israel. So I don't understand why Don Lemon Lemon feels inclined to pretend like that didn't happen. Isn't it incumbent on journalists to educate their viewers? I mean, if that's the case, why would you mislead your viewers like that? It doesn't make any sense to me. But thankfully, Bassem Yusuf was there to correct the record, and Bassem explained, as an American citizen himself, how absurd it is to see American politicians all bend over backwards to be the biggest Israel simps. Here's what's really interesting for me. Biden has bent off over backwards. He has lost the Arab vote. He has lost a lot of the liberals on the, on, on the left side. He has lost a lot of people because his support for Israel. And yet that is not enough. Basically, he is not, more, he is not uh, like enough. And there's nothing enough for Israel. You know? And it's funny that you know, we, are, we are heading to elections right now, right? And, uh, and a lot of people tell me, Biden or Trump, Biden or Trump. And I tell them, you know, it's a tough choice. I mean, both candidates are competing. Who can be Israel's favorite bitch? You know, Biden, after supplying Israel with weapons, sending bill- 26 billions of my tax dollars to them and having his spokesman like, you know, Weasel Kirby, gaslighting reporters in their faces every day. And after that, the Israelis are not satisfied. The conservatives on the right are bitch slapping Trump. How could you do that? How could you leave Israel? And then Trump and Kennedy on the other side, they're waiting. Oh, Israel, pick me, pick me. I am the one for you. And so, it is so humiliating as a U.S. citizen. You know, I'm new to this. I'm a new citizen. To see that my candidates are competing not for the betterment of Bassem, our lives as American. Go ahead, sorry. I'm so glad that he said that because he is so right. To hear all of this huffing and puffing from right-wingers about America first, to then see politicians like Trump attack Biden for supposedly not prioritizing Israel's needs enough not doing enough for Israel, it's just so rich to me. Now, it's especially rich considering how Biden is literally jeopardizing his own re-election chances, all to appease a foreign government that's hoping for a Trump victory in November. But Bassem goes on to explain why this is the case. And of course, as we all know, it comes down to our campaign finance system. Lobbying groups, super PACs, and special interests, they are able to effectively bribe and buy complicity from U.S. politicians. And Bossom explains this all so eloquently, only to then get smacked in the face with one of the dumbest fucking questions ever asked by a journalist. I genuinely could not believe that Don Lemon had the audacity to ask this question, but he does, and just watch till the end. I came to this country as uh, a new citizen. I mean, this is this is this is this is new to me. This is all new to me, and uh, I became a, a, a citizen in this country. 
And uh, so I, I'm, maybe I'm asking you to guide me. Uh, and everybody knows where I come from, you know, the third world countries. Uh, everybody knows that whoever is in control is not really in control. Whatever president or king or leader, they are basically answering to the US, Russia or China or France, whatever superpower is there. And then I come to the States, the land of the free, a country that is by the people, for the people. And I still remember the oath of allegiance that I have recited in front of a judge when I had my American citizen. And it goes like, I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce any other allegiances, all allegiances and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom to which I have therefore been a subject of citizen. And I would support the United States and, and its laws, right? And then we give a brochure telling us how important it is to vote. And they give me a form and I registered as a voter the first day I became a citizen. I was very happy and I was very happy to vote. Then comes to voting. All of the candidates, whether Republicans or, 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 or Democrats, they are telling you in your faces that they support Israel. APAC is talking, bragging about spending $100 million and bragging about the success rate of its candidates, whether Republicans or Democrats. And it's not about issues about jobs. It's not issues about health care, about justice. It's about the only issue is Israel. But so could, they are. Could, they are they, couldn't, I, people, I, couldn't the people say the same thing about you and about those who support Palestine? We'll get to Bassam's response in a minute, but we just have to pause for a moment because that question is so stupid. You actually have to take time to try to comprehend what Don Lemon is trying to say. But I don't think even he knows what he's trying to say, because as we go further into the interview, you're going to see that he moves the goalpost. But let's just stop for a moment and try to pretend like that's a good faith question and try to answer it in good faith. APAC is the lobbying firm of a foreign government that has vowed to spend more than $100 million to defeat its critics. They've spent more against Jamal Bowman than they've spent in any other congressional race that they've ever participated in. They then brag on Twitter about how successful they are at influencing American elections. Yet Don Lemon has the audacity to pretend like advocates for Palestine are comparable to APEC and the Israel lobby. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Don, ask yourself this question. How much money does the Palestinian lobby spend compared to Israel each election cycle? The pro-Palestinian lobbying firms that exist pale in comparison to APAC. For example, there's AGP Action and there's American Muslims for a Palestinian state, but those are basically just advocacy-oriented groups and they don't really wait into elections in the way that APAC does. There is Americans for a Palestinian state, which spent, wait for it, $950 in the 2010 election. And, you know, I'm sure that APAC was shaking in their boots at all that spending. But you've got basically some advocacy organizations and some defunct lobbying groups and some grassroots donations on the Palestinian side. And then you have APAC on the other side. How exactly are these two sides comparable? How? Palestinians functionally have zero influence in Congress. The one Palestinian American representative in Congress that we have was censured for just saying from the river to the sea. Senators, on the other hand, are saying we should nuke Gaza. You have members of the House saying we should turn Gaza into a parking lot. Were they censured? No. They said those terrible genocidal things and faced zero repercussions. How could you ask that question with a straight face on? Why are you pretending like both sides are equal? They are not equal, and you know this, which is what makes it so frustrating. Now, as dumb as that question is, Don Lemon, I guess he was really proud of it because he included that question in the preview for this interview at the very beginning and made it seem like Bassem Youssef was stumped based on how he edited it. Couldn't the people say the same thing about you and about those who support Palestine? So it's edited to make it seem like he backed him into a corner and Bassem Yusuf didn't know how to respond. But when you watch Bassem's response, he wasn't stumped at all. He responded immediately. Pay attention to how quickly he responds and then think about the way that it was edited in the beginning. Couldn't the people say the same thing about you and about those who support Palestine? Uh, where's my funding? Where's my funding? I'm being not being, I, I mean, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean, how can you compare me with an APAC, with like a lobby that has has pledged to pay a hundred million dollars, and in this, and in return they are bringing twenty six billion dollars to Israel. This is the best ROI I have ever seen in my life. How can you compare individuals like me, who go to do comedy or have uh, an account to social media? How do you compare that by the power of B that Bradley openly tells you that we control your politicians and you as an American are okay with this? 
What, what how can you how can you be okay with this as an American? Because I'm new to this. Are you guys used to that? Are you used to that kind of humiliation? You really got him there, Don. Backed him into a corner, and you know, Basim had no way of responding. So ridiculous. I don't necessarily think that Don Lemon was trying to be antagonistic. I genuinely think that he believes these questions are probing questions, and he's doing his job as a journalist in trying to you know, ask these tough questions, but he just sounds silly. And I think that he realized at some point that his questions are silly since he shifted the goalpost to make himself seem less stupid. So instead of saying, you know, this false equivalence between the lobbying power of Palestine and APAC exists when it doesn't because there's no comparison, he then says, no, 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 actually, I'm trying to argue that people who are against Palestinian genocide are as beholden to Palestine as pro-Israel politicians are to Israel. Now, that doesn't even make sense because the point that Bassam made was about lobbying power. But, of course, you know, Bassam responded by shutting down that stupidity as well. Again, it's just frustrating that Bassam has to answer this question and respond to that when it's so silly. But regardless, he does and he does a great job. What I'm responding to you is you saying when you took your pledge, you said you had to pledge allegiance to America and mm. renounce mm -hmm. allegiance to any other country. Yes. And so... That is where my question lies. Oh, ah, okay. How, how, how is my allegiance? Uh, do you, how, where is in any of what I just said right now can be considered an allegiance to a foreign country? I am an American citizen and I don't want my taxpayers' money be sent to a country that has been violating international laws. I have, I have not mentioned anything. I'm talking about Palestinians. I don't think I have allegiance to Hamas or the West Bank or Gaza because that would be stupid, right? So basically, where is my allegiance? My allegiance is the United States. On the other side, your polit the American politicians are openly wearing IDF uniforms in Congress, like Brian Mast, and they are, they are bragging about taking money from Israel and sending money back to Israel while me and you paying the tax dollar money in order to uh, to finance that. Where is where, I mean, again, can you repeat? Can, can you just like let me know where the where would whatever I just said right now shows that I have allegiance to any other country? I, where? Basim, I'm asking you a question because I can no, no, you just asked me and I, I'm, I'm just I'm just clarifying. You said like yeah. the, the same could be said about you. Yeah. Where is where is where is my double? Where is my double loyalty? Well, if, if, if folks, they're, when sending in aid and giving money to help the people in Gaza, some of that money would possibly go to help Hamas. Mm. That's what they believe. Some of those supplies may go to actually help Hamas. I, I, think, I think what the American people believe, again, this is not my belief, but I think what the but, but, but I'm sorry, you said some of the money, like the flour, the, like the flour massacre, the people were killed as they were collecting the flour. But, that but is the kind of money that if, Hamas if you'll let me, If you'll let me get in. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, they will, what, what American people will say is that there's no Hamas on the other side. There's no Hamas comparison to in Israel. Oh, really? So you wouldn't compare Ben Gavir or Smotrich or Naftali Bennett or Benjamin Netanyahu to Hamas? Because I would. Israel has done the equivalent of 30 plus October 7th since October 7th. They've done all this in Gaza, an area of land so small it's the size of Las Vegas. The IDF has bombed refugee camps, hospitals, universities, aid vehicles. They've blocked aid and starved this entire population. I mean, for all intents and purposes, the IDF is a terrorist organization. You not admitting that, that's disingenuous. That's racist because you have one standard for Palestinians and another for Israelis. But I mean, what exactly are you trying to say? Because Don Lemon first drew a false equivalence between APAC and Palestine supporters. He then drew a false equivalence between loyalty to Palestine and politicians who are beholden to the Israel lobby. But then when all of those comparisons fell flat, he brings up a different false equivalence, shifts the goalposts yet again, and suggests that aid to Palestinians is equally as outrageous as aid to Israel because, you know, that aid might benefit Hamas. He just keeps moving the goalposts because he's scrambling. What he's saying is nonsensical and imbecilic. There's a power asymmetry here that Don Lemon is refusing to acknowledge, but of course, Bassam Yusuf isn't letting him get away with these biased questions. Now, in the next portion, he continues to school him and call out these absurd false equivalences, but then it gets so much worse because I think that Don Lemon probably felt stupid since Bassam Yusuf was running circles around him. So what Don Lemon then tries to do is shift the stupidity onto Bassam to make it seem like he's the one who's the dumbass by 
basically insinuating that Bassem Youssef isn't able to understand Don Lemon's high IQ questions, probably because there's a language barrier there. I'm not making this up. So let's talk about Hamas. Where did, how did Hamas originate? And, I, and I'm sorry, and can I, can I just like a pop quiz, 2019, who said this in order to prevent the establishment of Netanyahu. a Palestinian state, yeah, Netanyahu, Netanyahu. So Netanyahu, basically, he was caught on tape many times bragging about sending money to Hamas. So every time you tell me Hamas, I will tell you Netanyahu. So can we, can, can we just like enough of that? Because I'm really sick and tired of like the same conversation again. You guys are talking about Hamas and Hamas has been bolstered and being financed under the eyes and nose of Netanyahu. So I don't well, even I, know what I, kind I, of conversation we're having. I don't having. know if, uh, listen, listen, Basim. I don't know if you're if it, if you're if it's just um, a, a language thing where because you keep asking me, I'm asking questions. I, I'm not saying that I believe anything, but I have to ask you questions. So I don't represent America in this conversation. I don't represent Israel in this conversation. I don't represent Palestine in this com conversation. I represent a journalist who's asking questions, and because there's no one who is an Israeli here or is a Jewish on, on this side, I'm simply playing devil's advocate to you. Okay. To get to try to get the answers or questions well, in from wait, the other wait, side. but isn't so that like I, so isn't that the opposite of what is it so the opposite of what you said I, a few years ago? I don't, I don't know if you're. At, I don't know if if maybe you maybe maybe, maybe 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 it's a second maybe, language. Maybe, no, maybe it's maybe. my second language. Okay, it's my right. it's my second language. I'm sorry. Okay, All right. I'm so sorry. I, so I don't know if you're being rhetorical by asking. I I I I'm I'm new to this, but like I remember you, John, said it like a couple of years ago. You said like you're done being a devil's advocate and doing both sides, and you want to be a journalist. So I'm talking to you as a journalist, and as a journalist, I'm not talking to you as a, on on opposite side of the. I'm basically. We are Americans. Me and you. We are both American citizens. I'm yeah, well, you. context You've been is everything. When I context is everything. When you when I said I'm sick of doing both sides, I'm, that was in relation specifically into American politics and Donald Trump and his administration and his lies. But it goes uh, with it, everything, it, it, by the it's, way. It, I think it's okay to present uh, questions, uh, different questions from different sides of an argument. That was infuriating. The reason why Bassem Yusuf seems confused by your questions, Don, wasn't because of a language barrier. His English is perfectly fine. He's baffled by the stupidity of your fucking questions. And I love how Bassem calls him out for saying he's no longer going to play devil's advocate and do both sides-ism. But then he says, oh, no, 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 I met only with regard to Donald Trump. So you're admitting that you're a shitty journalist because you're still saying I'm going to play devil's advocate and engage in false equivalences when it comes to genocide, which is a great fucking thing to do both sides-ism for, right? Great journalist, Don. Now, listen, to be perfectly fair, I've seen interviews from Don Lemon that are good. I think for the most part, he's pretty hit or miss if you ask me. But when it comes to this issue... Do us all a favor and drop the fucking bullshit and the pseudo-professionalism. We're talking about one of the worst atrocities our generation has seen. Stop with the phony, I'm a serious journalist bullshit. You don't have to play devil's advocate. Try to be a fucking human instead of acting like a robot for once in your goddamn life, Don. But listen, this isn't a Don Lemon problem. This is an American media problem. These kinds of questions are perfectly acceptable because we just don't view Palestinians as equal human beings. Their dehumanization and erasure is institutionalized in American media, and that's what we're seeing manifest right here. But having said that, though, I am really thankful that people like Basim Yusuf exist, and they're able to push back on these massive platforms and really set the record straight. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas.